The real Lombardi Trophy will be arriving, I believe, in about half an hour. The parade is going to start here at Union Station. Fans have been lined up for hours. They're about, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine deep now. Do you guys want to? You guys want to kiss my Lombardi Trophy? He gave it a cheek bump. That's kind of the. What about you? Oh yeah, this is special. Shouldn't you guys be in school? Yes. Maybe. Maybe. His expert bracket crew, an Irish priest, the mayor of Denver, a former Duke national champion, and a Broncos cheerleader. We do brackets um, for, you know, a lot of things, like The Bachelor. You watch a lot of college basketball? I don't watch a lot of college okay, basketball. Okay, neither do I. I'm still shocked he picked Vanessa. I am shocked he picked Vanessa. Notre Dame, Princeton. Well, the fighting Irish. I mean, being from Ireland, I have to go with Notre Dame on that one. Butler, Winthrop. Ooh, I like Winthrop. They had a good year in the Big South. Miami or Michigan State? Miami. Any reason? None. Good. Duke or Troy? Really? Troy? Troy? No. Duke. Duke. <laughs> Hypothetically, if my Final Four has Notre Dame and Villanova, who do you think would win that? I'm going to go with Villanova just because they're the defending champs. Iowa State, Kentucky? Let's go with Kentucky. To round it out, Villanova and Kentucky. Let's go with uh, Villanova. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. If you, uh, if you win, let me know. Okay. <laughs> X, Pyro, Chi Chiro Pump Flex. That's correct. <laughs> Did you watch any of the National Spelling Bee this week? I am still not convinced that some of those are real words. But I decided to go out today and have a Denver Sports Spelling Bee. And yes, the point of my fan on these street segments is to make people look silly. But I have never had one go as poorly as this. DJ LeMayhew. L-A-Y. No. L-A-M. No. L-A. <laughs> L-E. M. I. <laughs> Antonio Senzatella. How about Senzatella? C I N. C I N? Yeah. No, no, no. S. S I N. S E N. S E N. Okay. Nikola Jokic. Y. Z. He's laughing at you. I have no idea. So the Broncos have another quarterback competition. It has been three months since Vance Joseph was hired, but he still hasn't been on the field with his two young QBs. So when asked to compare them, he has used the same lines over and over. First, his thoughts on Trevor Simeon. You've got Trevor, who's a, who's a great technician, great footwork. He's, he's smart, efficient. A fundamentally sound, great footwork, you know, great with the ball. He's smart. He's, uh, he's fast with the ball. Uh, you know, he makes little error with the football. That's important. Smart, efficient, fundamentally sound. Those are some fine qualities to have in a quarterback. But they are nothing compared to what Paxton brings to the table. You know, Paxton's a tall, big arm guy, athletic guy. He's a big guy with a big arm. He's very athletic. Obviously, Paxton's a big, strong guy with a big arm. He's a, he's a tall man with a big arm. You got the big guy in Paxton who, who's a big, tall, you know, big arm, very athletic. Three months, and the only thing that Joseph has found to say about Paxton Lynch is that he is tall and has a big arm. You know, why not add that he has brown hair and he kind of looks like a pirate? So this week, the New York Jets tweeted that they will be debuting a no-fly zone this season. Now, the Broncos aren't the first team to use that nickname, but I figured that they might take issue with another team using it at the same time. The New York Jets tweeted something yesterday that had a little graphic that said debuting a no-fly zone. <laughs> That's funny. There's only one no fly zone. It's funny, you know, I don't, because it's like the Jets, what have they done? That's a good question. The Jets secondary last year was 17th in pass defense and tied for 25th with 30 touchdowns allowed. And the current players, not exactly household names. Who? The Jets? The Jets, they put a little uh, graphic Dang. up that's in that they're debuting their no-fly zone. Anybody? I don't even know any DBs on their teams. Now it's a no-fly zone. Like, what? Look like they're flying pretty good, you know? Yeah, all passes cleared for takeoff at MetLife Stadium. Oh, yes, I was waiting for that. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting for that, that, uh, that question. And I have been waiting as well for the chance to do extra clips again. So Von Miller's excitement was to talk about the new NFL rules that will allow for more celebrations. Von's, like, really excited about this. Think about it. You got a touchdown, you got five old linemen, and they got a little temptation routine. <laughs> It, it'll be great. It'll be great. So, you know, um, we got to get a, you know, a, a choreographer in here once a week to, you know, help some of the guys out because everybody, you know, they can't move like, you know, your boys. 
Now, of course, Vaughn thinks he's the best dancer on the team. He did finish sixth on season 22 of Dancing with the Stars, sixth out of 11. So Vaughn knows what he's talking about. And Vaughn really seems to think that the O-line can steal the show. The best and the worst, it, it just depends on who's looking at it, you know. You know, the offensive linemen, they probably can't move that much, but when they celebrate, it's nothing better than that. You know, it's like a big dancing bear. The bears were dancing. Did you guys see that? The bears were dancing. But what about dancing quarterbacks? And what about dancing quarterbacks from Northwestern? Maybe Trevor Simeon has a hidden talent. Yeah, I might have to figure out something this year. No, it's not. I mean, it's not, not up my alley, so I don't think that'll be um, affecting me too much. And all year long, every time the Broncos have faced a team, they've said this quarterback is going to be too big of a challenge. They said it with Ben Roethlisberger. They said it with Tom Brady. And you thought for sure maybe Cam Newton, the best quarterback in the league this year, would be too much of a challenge. He wasn't. The pressure they put on him, he looked rattled at times. When Brock Osweiler got to Houston, one of the things he said was that he thought the Texans gave him the best chance to be successful. Well, the Broncos defense, they know Brock pretty well, and they were pretty confident he wasn't going to have much success here tonight. Well, I, I looked up in the fourth quarter, man, before I think that last drive, he had like 70 yards passing. And I just, you know, I just smiled in the inside. You're here with Chris Harris. Uh, how frustrating was this one? I was definitely frustrating losing the uh, Patriots. You know, I'll never want to lose to them. And we got playoff hopes. So uh, just losing, just, that makes it all bad. To hold a Tom Brady offense to just one touchdown and to lose 16 to three. Man, that's the best we ever played against him, man. Uh, to give up 16 points versus Brady. I don't think he had a completion in the first quarter, so. Not being a pro, that's a, that's a big difference. So that is the opinion from the Titans locker room. Let's head to Nashville and join Michael Spencer. And Michael, I think it's safe to say that the Broncos have a slightly different view of what happened in that second quarter. Finally, Patriots, Chiefs, Raiders. What chances do you give the Broncos to even make the postseason this year? It's going to be tough. It's going to be a, I mean, this is going to be a tough run. And so Kubiak did tell you guys after the game he is stepping away? Yeah, he told us. He just said that he didn't want to tell us during the week. He wanted the game to just be about the team. And uh, and uh, we, we had no business today, and we, we wanted to send him out right, and we did. What was the reaction uh, when he told you after the game? Of course, everybody's sad. It's a great day to, day to be an ore digger. M-I-N-E-S. Anytime you sign a five-star recruit, it's a big deal. We beat Ohio State. We beat USC. We beat Notre Dame. We beat Florida. A whole 3'11", 42 pounds. He's going to be a monster for us. It's got a huge day today. What made you uh, choose the School of Mines? Um, because they're cool. They're cool? Mm-hmm. All right, well, we could go ahead and have Scott sign his national letter of intent. Do you know what you just signed? No. No? Did you read it first? No. He could play quarterback, he could play running back, he could play receiver. He could even sack the quarterback. I mean, he's, he's got a master tool bag. Well, I'm pretty good at running. Okay. And I mean, I also, I, I'm also good at stealing the football. I can, like, easily run past them and steal the, like, grab them out of their hands. And the best part of today, cupcakes and donuts. At the School of Mines, Mark Haas, CBS4 Sports. Ow! You're in big trouble. I, uh, I bring a quick, uh, quick, quick glove. Quick glove, there you go. How do you think this is going to go for me? I, I, don't, I don't expect success for you. Are you worried about my safety? Not worried about your safety, because I really don't care about your safety. That was mean! Remember when you won a gold medal? Uh, yeah, I, I can, I recall, yeah. He scores! Troy Terry again! And then remember when I stopped one of your shootouts? Yeah, I remember trying to do the same move on you, and you, you kick saved it. USA! USA!